Okay, we got day six on Eric's truck here, 1962 Chevy pickup. Uh, as you can see, we've already torn apart the front end. We've done a bunch of cleaning up on stuff. Um, we started doing some rust repair. So today we're gonna go ahead and finish off on the rust repair that we started on our right side door. And we're gonna go ahead and start on our left side door. So yesterday when I was doing my repairs on the door, I showed you from this angle here basically. So we'll finish this off in this angle. Then I'll mount the camera over here and we'll do the uh, left side from uh, this angle so you'll be able to get a different perspective of the work that I'm doing and you'll get a better idea of how this is done. So, stay tuned. Yesterday we left our uh, driver's side door like this, or passenger side door, sorry. So you can see here we're all welded up. This is looking pretty nice. Um, we're gonna go ahead and finish this off right here. And uh, that's doing pretty good. So we're just gonna finish this off and then we'll start on the other side. So now while I'm waiting for these um, welds to cool down, I'll start rolling this inside bead. Now, one of the things you want to keep in mind about this inside bead is that down at the bottom of the doors, there's some large openings that will let the dirt and the moisture out in the future. So you're going to need to cut a little notch right here on um, both of those entries so that um, that stuff can get out. <clears throat> I'm just going to cut my uh, vertical slots right now. and I'm going to fold it over and then I'll cut the last horizontal piece out. Don't worry, I'll be showing you this later. Okay, so here's our drain plug. I cut my slots right here and here and I go ahead and I fold it over. If I cut this off now, then it's real difficult to roll this edge over. So I'll get it rolled over at least this far, then I'll go ahead and um, flatten these other areas down more. This tang, tang will still be hanging up, and then I can just cut off, oh, say about a quarter inch from the bottom or so there. Uh, here on the sides, I do a 90 degree uh, angle cut right here, or 45 I guess. So, uh, so that these two pieces will fold down on top of each other. And you can see how this is all molded in completely there now. And I'm starting to work on this side molding that in. So another thing I want to do is get a hard wheel. So a hard wheel is called a hard wheel because it's a hard wheel. The um, flap grinders like this right here, you can see like there's a bunch of little flaps. So these are really nice for getting large open areas, but um, and if you try to grind in your nooks and crannies right in here, then this will just get eaten up in no time at all. So this baby here will run you like five, six, seven, eight, nine bucks. These you pick up for two bucks. So you use this on all of your nasty, big, ugly welds, and you use it in all your nooks and crannies. Then we'll go ahead and we'll finish finish off with um, the flap grinder.
Okay, you want to go get a um, you'll want to go get a hammer that's shaped like this. You can see the bevel on the edge right here, and then that's what you're going to use to finish off the um, the bottom down here. When you roll the edge over, most of the time you'll get just a little bit of uh, hang over here. So what I'll do is I'll take a cutting wheel and just ever so gently cut this down so this matches all up. Now you really don't need to go to this much trouble because the rubber, um, you know, most of the time people just don't look down there and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that. I'll go ahead and I'll trim this right here and here and clean up that edge over there too. Okay, so our curvature looks really good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this, make sure this very, very bottom is flat. But remember, we're not going to mess with any of this in here, just the very bottom. With the bottom edge here nice and straight, I can go ahead and every couple of inches or so um, just clean off a little bit of metal and just get some tack welds down here. If you want to go for more of an original look, you can go ahead and drill holes and do it that way too, but who the hell is going to look this far down on the bottom? So one last final step I'll do here is I'll switch over to a um, finer grit um, sanding wheel, 120 grit, and I'll go ahead and I'll do all of these areas here so we don't have any deep scratches that might show up in the future. We'll be doing body work on this um, a little bit later next week, and uh, so I don't really need to paint this up all uh, bitching and stuff because I'll be grabbing most of it off. But um, when you shoot some stuff on there, acid etch primer is really nice. Doesn't necessarily need to be Krylon, but acid etch primer is nice. The acid and the acid etch, uh, as it would insinuate, um, just kind of bites into the metal and any prior paint or primer or what have you that's on there, and it just makes the paint stick a little bit better. So it's good to use on um, situations where you have bare metal and paint and Bondo and primer and things like that. All right, we're all done. That's looking pretty good. Now, because you can't um, get behind here really well to dammer, hammer and dolly, this will probably tuck in a little bit more on you than the front did, um, but that's okay because this is going to be hard to see, and, um, you know, just a little bit of filler and take that all up. 
Um, so uh, that's what that looks like when that's all done. Now we'll um, get started on the other door. Okay, it looks like this door is basically just like our right door. We don't have any dents that are up higher that would make us use a larger portion of the uh, patch panel here. I'm going to be able to get away with four or five inches, and just like on the other door, I'll be doing four inches here and five inches here. Be cutting it at a slight diagonal to help keep it from bowing in and out. Okay, we're just going to get a slight bow going outward, just like it matches the door right here. Keep in mind the door is not flat, at least up in this area. It is at the very, very bottom, but not up in here. So you have to make sure those curvatures match. So now I'll grind the edges right here and the very bottom um, where the metal overlaps. I'll be grinding it just until the metal splits, and then I'll be able to slide this up better. Now, two pieces are cut exactly the same. Uh, go ahead and cut out the majority of the stuff. I leave the spot welds on, then I'll come back and cut the spot welds off. Now I can uh, just gently uh, cut these sides here and be able to gently take this off. This door bottom I'm going to do just a little bit different just to show the guys that um, are going to have to use the larger patch panels. I'm not going to use the larger patch panel, but um, I'm going to show you how to do it if you were going to. Um, the basic gig is that this will not butt up all the way against the uh, metal where it um, should exactly because of the additional metal down here. So we'll just cut off some of this metal down here that will enable this to move exactly where we want it and right down onto the, um, the door.
Okay, so another trick that I didn't do on the other side of the door um, because this was so small, but that you'll need to do if you have a larger piece. Actually, it's not a bad idea if you're doing a smaller piece too, if you're a novice. But um, we've, again, we need to make sure this curvature here is correct in the front and in the back. So um, this piece here, it's easy to get this up a little bit or in a little bit. So that'll really throw you off. Um, so what we're gonna do, is we just get this and we make sure that this is lined up good and then we can go ahead and cut this off. This way when we um, uh, put this piece in after the fact, it'll line up a little bit faster and easier. So now comes the fun job of cleaning out the inside. Make sure that you um, get these um, burrs off because they'll slice and dice you. Okay, so now I'll take it outside and uh, clean it up. While we're waiting for the door to uh, finish drying, I'm just going to take care of a stretch crack I found in the inner fender and weld up a few superfluous holes. So let's say you have a stress crack, it's relatively normal in um, all this old metal. So if you have a stress crack, usually there's no gap between the metal on the stress crack. So you have to actually cut yourself a little bit of a groove in there. You've heard me talk about this before. The reason being is that um, if you don't have some place for the weld to go into, then if you weld it on top, it may not permeate through the metal all that well, and when you grind the weld off the top, then you'll still have the stress crack hiding underneath, so to speak. So you just uh, cut a little groove in there, weld it up, and then sand it. Okay, so you're seeing me grind it twice. I'm doing it first with a 40 grit or so, 60 grit, and I'm finishing off with 120. Now, normally I wouldn't hassle that. Um, it's just we uh, more than likely won't have the money for um, sandblasting all this stuff. When you sandblast it or media blast it, then it just kind of uh, washes away the um, scratches. But uh, if we're not going to be doing that, we're going to need to sand away those scratches. Now I'll go ahead and paint the inside of the hood. Um, again, these edges right here, I'm going to be shooting a lot of paint because wherever you have overlapping metal, that's where the harbor, um, the moisture harbors the most and you have your most problems. So when you start painting, Start at the back, or the top I guess, and then work your way down. This way you get less pain on your arms and hands. Make sure your paint is nice and dry because if it's not, the fumes can ignite, explode, and uh, then the remainder of the paint will catch on fire and burn. So you can paint the inside of this too, just get some extra protection.
so let's say I find a high spot um, and I want to bring it down. So what I'll do is I'll just do a little bit more welding in that area all at once and it'll shrink it and bring it down. Another trick you can do if it's way up is that you can do a couple of welds and you can put hot water on it real quick and that'll squelch it down even faster. So now you can see all the spot welds are getting pretty close together. Now I'll start doing what I call piggybacking. So you'll have one weld right here and then uh, I'll do another weld right next to it. So um, sometimes um, it's hard to judge uh, the distance. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, do a little weld and I'll move it forward just ever so slightly towards the other one and make sure we don't have any pits in the middle. Okay, so we are all done for the day. Let's take a look at what we got. As you can see, that's looking pretty good there. We'll have a little bit of body work. It tucks in a little bit here and there. But, um, just do the best you can. Aim for perfection. If it turns out good, you're done. So, tomorrow I'll finish off this door and I'll do some other stuff too, but um, you're going to have to tune in and see what. So, uh, we'll see you all then.